Ever feel like just um, throwing a ton of information into a digital warehouse and calling it a knowledge management system? Yeah. Yeah, we've all been there. But what if I told you there's a more kind of strategic approach, mm -hmm. one that's uh, laser focused on ROI and actually helps your company's bottom line? That's what we're diving into today, the world of push-pull KMS. We've got a stack of articles here by Guy W. Wallace. And let me tell you, he doesn't hold back on the details. It's refreshing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So many companies, they just want the quick fix. Okay. You know, the shiny new KMS without putting in the strategic groundwork. Yeah. Wallace gets right to the chase. Not all KMS are created equal. He's all about that ROI, right? right absolutely. So for those of you wondering how to convince your boss that a KMS isn't just another expensive tech toy, this is for you. Wallace breaks down the financial case with concepts like cost of nonconformance and cost of conformance. Which are brilliant when you think about it. Yeah. Cost of nonconformance, that's the price you pay for knowledge gaps. Imagine the lost productivity, the rework, the poor decisions, just because someone couldn't find the right information at the right time. Ouch. Those are some expensive mistakes. Yeah. And I bet most companies don't even realize how much those knowledge gaps are actually costing them. Exactly. And that's where cost of conformance comes in. It's the investment you make in a KMS to prevent those mistakes from happening in the first place. Yeah. So it's about shifting from a reactive to a proactive approach to knowledge management. Yes. But how do we actually quantify those costs and make a compelling business case? Well, Wallace provides a framework for that. He argues that you need to demonstrate how the cost of implementing and maintaining a KMS, your cost of conformance, is significantly outweighed by the savings and increased revenue generated from reducing the uh, cost of nonconformance. Okay. You see. So essentially you're showing that investing in a strategic KMS is like plugging those money leaks. Yes. While simultaneously boosting earning potential. Absolutely. Music to any CFO's ears. <laughs> Absolutely. And what I appreciate is that Wallace doesn't just talk theory. Right. He lays out a comprehensive system with 12 key systems. Wow. And a detailed 47 process model. He certainly doesn't shy away from the details. But for someone just starting out, 47 processes can seem a bit overwhelming. What are some of the core systems that are particularly crucial for a successful KMS, especially in the push-pull model? Out of those 12 systems, let's focus on three that are absolutely essential. Governance, strategic planning, and operational planning. These systems lay the groundwork for a well-structured, efficient, and adaptable KMS. Think of them as the foundation, framing, and wiring of your knowledge house. Okay, I like that analogy. Yeah. So let's start with the foundation, governance. What does that entail, and why is it so important? Governance is all about setting clear lines of responsibility, decision-making authority, and accountability for your KMS. You need a dedicated team or board with the authority to make decisions, allocate resources, and champion the initiative within your organization. So it's about making sure everyone is on the same page. Yes. And there's a clear chain of command for all things KMS related. Exactly. Without strong governance, even the most well-intentioned KMS initiatives can quickly devolve into chaos. Right. You risk conflicting priorities, duplicated efforts, and a lack of overall direction. That makes sense. Now let's talk about strategic planning, the framing of our knowledge house. What should organizations be thinking about at this stage? Strategic planning is where you align your KMS with your overall business objective. Okay. It's about taking that long-term view, anticipating future needs, and ensuring your KMS is agile enough to adapt to changing market conditions and emerging trends. So it's not just about solving today's problems, it's about anticipating tomorrow's challenges and opportunities. Precisely. You need to ask yourself, what knowledge will be critical for our success in the next five years? What skills and competencies will our employees need to develop? How can our KMS support these goals? It's about future-proofing your knowledge ecosystem. Okay, we've got our foundation and framing in place. Now let's talk about the wiring operational planning. What does that involve? Operational planning is where you move from the strategic to the tactical. Okay. You're translating those high-level goals into concrete action plans, establishing clear milestones, allocating resources, and setting realistic timelines. So it's about bringing those strategic visions down to earth and figuring out the nuts and bolts of making it all happen. Exactly. And this is where those 47 processes come into play. Right. Providing a framework for all those essential operational activities, from content creation and curation to user support support, knowledge sharing, and performance measurement. Right. Because a KMS is not a set it and forget it system. No. It requires ongoing attention 
investment, and a well-defined operational plan to ensure it continues to deliver value over time. Absolutely. Now, speaking of delivering value, let's delve into the heart of Wallace's approach, this distinction between push and pull knowledge management. Okay, remind us again, what's the core difference and why is it so important for a strategic KMS? Imagine you're a master chef and your kitchen is your KMS. Okay. Push is like having your sous chef proactively prepare those essential ingredients. Chopping vegetables, measuring spices, having everything ready to go when you need it. Okay. It's about anticipating the needs of your team and proactively delivering the knowledge they need to succeed. Okay, so it's about being one step ahead. Ensuring those mission-critical pieces of knowledge are readily available even before someone realizes they need them. Exactly. And this is especially crucial for new employees or those in roles where even small knowledge gaps can have significant consequences. So you're not just waiting for people to come to you with questions. You're proactively pushing out knowledge to prevent those questions from arising in the first place. You got it. Now let's go back to our master chef analogy. Okay. Pull, on the other hand, is like having a well-organized pantry where your team can easily find and access any additional ingredients they might need. It's about providing a centralized, easily searchable repository of knowledge that empowers employees to find information on their own. So it's about striking that balance between proactive knowledge dissemination and empowering employees to be self-sufficient. Exactly. And this is where technology can really shine, providing those powerful search functionalities, intelligent tagging systems, and collaborative tools that allow employees to easily find and share information. And that brings us back to the importance of those operational processes we talked about earlier. Yeah. You need to have systems in place for organizing, tagging, and updating your content to ensure that the pull aspect of your KMS is just as effective as the push. Precisely. Because a poorly organized or outdated knowledge base is just as useless as not having one at all. So it sounds like a successful push-pull KMS requires a carefully orchestrated dance between proactive knowledge dissemination, a well-structured and easily searchable knowledge base, and a culture that encourages both self-sufficiency and knowledge sharing. Absolutely. It's about creating a dynamic knowledge ecosystem where information flows seamlessly, employees are empowered to learn and grow, and the organization reaps the rewards of a truly knowledge-driven culture. This has been incredibly insightful. Yeah. We've gone from the strategic importance of ROI and those key KMS systems to the core difference between push and pull knowledge management. But how do you actually go about implementing this push-pull approach? What are the practical steps involved in building those knowledge products and getting them into the hands of the right people at the right time? Well, that's where things get really interesting, and that's precisely what we'll be diving into next. Stay tuned as we explore the practical side of building a successful push-pull KMS. Let's get into the weeds a bit, shall sure. we? We've talked about the why of a push-pull KMS, but now I'm itching to know the how. How do we actually build those targeted knowledge products and ensure they hit the mark? That's where Wallace's PCT processes come into play. PCT processes. Yes. A systematic approach to ensure your knowledge products are laser focused on improving performance and meeting the needs of your target audiences. Sounds intriguing. Break it down for us. Okay. Think of it as a uh, three-phase journey. We start with Curriculum Architecture Design, or CAD. CAD. Yes. Imagine a blueprint for your knowledge management system. It's about identifying your target audience, their specific needs, and mapping out the structure of your content in a modular, interconnected way. So before we even start building those knowledge products, we need a clear roadmap of what we're building and who it's for. Exactly. And then comes the construction phase, modular curriculum development, or MCD. MCD. Yeah. This is where you take that blueprint and start building out individual knowledge modules, like concise reference guides, in-depth training programs, even interactive simulations. And these modules are designed to be self-contained, easily updated, and reusable across different contexts. It's like building with Lego blocks. Very right? a great analogy. You can mix and match these modules to create custom learning journeys for different roles or departments. I like it. And finally, we reach the finishing touches. Instructional Activity Development, or IAD. IAD. Time to bring those modules to life. Exactly. What's the secret sauce here? 
It's about crafting those specific learning activities, interactions, and even assessments within each module to ensure your employees truly absorb and apply the information. We're talking about making those modules as engaging and effective as possible. And this is where that collaboration aspect comes in, right? You're not just creating content in a vacuum. You're getting input from subject matter experts, target users, even leadership to ensure those knowledge products are spot on. Absolutely. A successful KMS is a team effort, but it's not just about internal collaboration. Wallace points out that you have a whole ecosystem of stakeholders to consider. Stakeholders beyond the office walls. Yeah. That's an interesting angle. Each with their own set of interests and needs. What are we talking about here? Well, let's start with the obvious. Your employees, they're both users and contributors to the knowledge base. So understanding their needs and workflows is crucial. Makes sense. Then of course you have your leadership team who need to be bought into the vision and value of the KMS. And let's not forget about customers. Oh, right. Your KMS should ultimately serve them by improving product quality, service delivery, or overall customer experience. Okay, so that's employees, leadership, and customers. Mm -hmm. Who else is at the stakeholder table? We also have to consider government entities and regulatory bodies. Your KMS needs to be compliant with relevant laws and industry standards. That's crucial, especially in today's rapidly evolving regulatory landscape. And then there are your suppliers and partners. Ah, yeah. Aligning your knowledge management practices with theirs can lead to a more efficient and collaborative supply chain. So it's about recognizing that knowledge management doesn't happen in the silo. It touches every aspect of your business and even extends beyond your organizational boundaries. Precisely. And navigating those diverse stakeholder needs can be tricky. But here's the thing. These differing perspectives can actually be a gold mine of insights. Okay. They can help you refine your KMS strategy, ensure you're addressing the most critical needs, and create a system that truly benefits everyone involved. It's about turning potential conflict into a source of creative tension. Yes. Ultimately leading to a more robust and well-rounded KMS. Yes. That's fascinating. Yeah. But let's shift gears a bit and talk about the elephant in the room. Maintenance. We all know that feeling of opening a shared drive folder only to find outdated documents and broken links. Ugh. How do we prevent our shiny new KMS from becoming a digital graveyard? Where do we even begin? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And it's where many well-intentioned KMS initiatives fall short. They underestimate the importance of ongoing maintenance and the resources required to keep those knowledge products current, accurate, and relevant. So what's the secret to keeping our KMS alive and thriving? Where do we even begin? So what's the secret to keeping our KMS alive and thriving? Where do we even begin? It starts with recognizing that maintaining a KMS is not a one-time project. It's an ongoing commitment. Think of it like tending a garden. You wouldn't just plant some seeds and walk away hoping for the best, would you? Definitely not. You've got to water, weed, prune. It's an ongoing process. Exactly. And just like a garden, your KMS needs regular care and attention to thrive. This means establishing clear processes for content review and updates. Okay. Who's responsible for checking if information is current? How often do those checks happen? And it's not just about catching outdated information, right? It's also about adding new knowledge incorporating those lessons learned, those aha moments that happen organically within the organization. Absolutely. Your KMS should be a living, breathing reflection of your company's collective intelligence. Right. And that requires creating a culture where knowledge sharing is the norm, not the exception. So how do you actually foster that kind of culture? It's one thing to have a fancy KMS, but it's another thing entirely to get people to actually use it and contribute to it. It's about demonstrating the value, making it crystal clear how the KMS can make everyone's lives easier and more productive. Okay. Showcase those success stories. Right. Highlight the teams or individuals who are using the KMS effectively. It's like those employee of the month boards, but for knowledge sharing superstars. Exactly. Recognition goes a long way. Uh -huh. And don't underestimate the power of simplicity. Yeah. The easier it is to use your KMS, the more likely people are to embrace it. Right. Invest in intuitive search functions, clear navigation, and a user-friendly interface. Because the last thing you want is for your KMS to become another one of those dreaded, impossible-to-navigate shared drives. Exactly. And when it comes to maintenance, technology can be your best friend. Okay. Leverage those automated tools that can alert you to outdated content, track version history, and streamline the review process. It's about working smarter, not harder. Yes. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Pushcoal KMS, what's the key takeaway you want our listeners to walk away with? 
a well-designed KMS built on the principles of push-pull and supported by a culture of knowledge sharing can be a true game changer. It can empower your employees, streamline your operations, and give your organization a significant competitive edge. It's about harnessing the power of collective intelligence and turning information into actionable insights. Precisely. And remember, implementing a KMS is a journey, not a destination. Right. It requires ongoing commitment, a willingness to adapt, and a relentless focus on delivering value to your users. It's been an absolute pleasure picking your brain about all things KMS. Thanks for joining us and sharing your expertise. The pleasure was all mine. And to our listeners, we hope this deep dive has equipped you with the knowledge and inspiration to transform your own approach to knowledge management. Remember, in today's rapidly evolving business landscape, the ability to capture, share, and leverage knowledge effectively is no longer a nice-to-have, it's a must-have. Yeah. So go forth, build those knowledge powerhouses, and unlock the transformative potential that awaits. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing and those knowledge gears turning.